Worldwide Hippies presents Hippie News and Stuff with Winston Smith and the Worldwide Hippies News Team. Welcome to Hippie TV News and Stuff for the week of July 18th. Brought to you by WorldwideHippies.com, I am Winston Smith. Fallout from Fukushima? Fear a powerful motivator? Obama keeps protesters away? North Dakota should get a huge refund from the government this year? P.E. Nolan is here with a report, our asshole of the week, and more. First, our top story. Slick Willie is at it again. A new expose in the Nation magazine reveals that trailers the Clinton Foundation donated to post-earthquake Haiti to use as temporary classrooms and to double as hurricane shelters are plagued by mold, shoddy construction, and air quality tests reveal worrying levels of formaldehyde. Here's a report from Democracy Now! A new investigative report from The Nation magazine takes a critical look at the Clinton Foundation's first recovery commission project in post-earthquake Haiti. The journalist who broke the story, Isabel McDonald and Isabeau Doucette, their piece, The Shelters That Clinton Built, is in the July 11th issue of The Nation magazine online at thenation.com. Isabeau, talk more about what you found. What we found was, I mean, not only are these uh, hurricane-proof shelters, trailers, um, which cannot be hurricane-proof according to, you know, U.S. standards, but, um, you know, they were riddled with any number of problems. They're extremely hot. They're leaking. They're, there's mold. You know, there's visibly already starting to rot, even though they're, they're freshly installed. So we thought... Given that Clinton himself was the one who, who coined this term, build back better, we're going to build back better Haiti, um, what does this mean uh, as, as for, for what's to come um, of the commission's projects? Isabel McDonald, Clayton Holmes, can you explain? Well, we've, been, we've been requesting documentation of any bidding process from the Clinton Foundation. The Clinton no. Foundation has not answered our questions about any due diligence that was done. We know that trailers are considered a liability in the United States. In the case of a hurricane, FEMA tells Americans to evacuate trailers. And so the real question is, how did Bill Clinton think that this would be acceptable in Haiti to provide these trailers as hurricane shelters, to buy them from a company facing this kind of lawsuit over formaldehyde. And Bill Clinton himself has his hands all over it. And he is the co-chair of this commission that is supposed to ensure that Haiti is built back better. We're going to have to leave it there. And this, just one day after Miller Coors Brewing Company landed in the crosshairs of Minnesota's government shutdown, Governor Mark Dayton and the GOP legislative leaders announced they have reached a budget deal to end the two-week stalemate. Dayton, whose nickname is The Blunderer, basically has handed over the whole state of Minnesota to the Republicans after what seemed like an intervention from Coors Corporation itself. Just another Democrat in the pocket of big money, bye-bye unions, and fair representation. Protesters were arrested as vote nears on U.S. Columbian trade deal. 51 black cardboard coffins were paraded in front of the White House last Monday by members of labor, religious, and environmental organizations protesting the pending U.S.-Columbia trade promotion agreement. As we have reported here on Worldwide Hippies, Columbia is a killing field for pro-union labor. And yet another turnaround from his campaign promises, President Barack Obama has since day one been pushing this U.S. job-killing agreement, with Hillary Clinton being his mule between ruling families, multinational corporations, and Congress. Along with GAFTA, NAFTA, and other screw-you-trade deals, this will just increase the din of that huge sucking sound that old Ross Perot used to talk about. But you and I will be the ones deafened by it. And here is P.E. Nolan with report on Greenpeace. What's happening, Trish? Hey, Winston. Greenpeace has been very busy this year, targeting deep water drilling in the Arctic, deforestation in Sumatra, challenging Nike and Adidas to detox their supply chain, and launching the Coal Free Future Tour uh, on the East Coast. Last February, activists climbed a coal elevator at the Bridgeport Harbor Generating Station and hung a banner reading, Shut It Down, Quit Coal. Uh, the facility is an aging, inefficient plant that endangers the health of the residents of Bridgeport, including children at six schools within one mile of the plant. Um, and the pollution spreads down into New York, Pennsylvania, and into other neighboring states. Uh, 
Greenpeace is returning to Bridgeport this weekend, July the 21st, for the Gathering of the Vibes Music Festival with a biodiesel track called The Rolling Sunlight. Rolling Sunlight has been on the road since 2001, traveling the country to show people just how easy it could be to have cleaner energy everywhere. Uh, you can find out about Rolling Sunlight and uh, other things happening this summer with Greenpeace at greenpeace.org USA. And, um, sometimes all it takes to be an activist is to support others. Go out, have a good time, and um, spread a little sunlight. Back to you, Winston. Thank you, Tricia. And you can see P.E. Nolan each Monday here on Hippie TV News and Stuff. Hey, is North Dakota really a state? Looks like it isn't. An 82-year-old Grand Forks man has pointed out a constitutional flaw that questions whether North Dakota has ever been a state. John Rolandkowski points out that the original state constitution left out the executive branch, the governor, and other high-ranking officials when it explains who needs to take an oath of office. Rolandkowski says that puts the state constitution in conflict with the federal one, making it invalid. This spring, Senator Tim Mathern of Fargo introduced a bill to fix the constitutional wording. North Dakota voters will need to approve the constitutional amendment in November of next year. Does this mean that North Dakota has all of its federal taxes paid to the U.S. government owed back to them? And if voters vote no to the new constitution, will North Dakota be its own nation? Is North Dakota a red state or a blue state? Anyway, quick update on the radiation fallout over the U.S. I know you don't want to hear it, so I'll just give it to you this way. The EPA has said it will continue to monitor radiation levels in the air, precipitation, drinking water, and milk, even if budget impasse shuts down the government next week. Thanks a lot. Just FYI, the EPA is staffed by volunteers at these monitoring stations, and many monitors aren't even working. The people who interpret the results probably will be laid off in the event of a government shutdown. That's the truth in reporting, at least. Oh, and it's time for our asshole of the week. This week it goes to Midway, Georgia's police chief, Kelly Morningstar, who shut down a lemonade stand run by three young women. Watch this. Three girls' dream of going to a water park was quickly put to an end after Midway police shut it down. But it, it was fun and stuff, but we had to listen to the cops and shut it down. The girls had only been open for one day before Midway's police chief and an officer cruised by and saw the stand. Telling them, look, we understand you guys are young, but still, you're breaking the law, and we can't let you do it anymore. We're not aware of how the lemonade was made, who made the lemonade, or what the lemonade was made with. So we did act accordingly by city ordinance. It's almost like they're just, I don't know, they don't have anything better to do. <laughs> I'm going to let it go. I'm trying to teach them good. <laughs> and I don't think if I keep on and on and on that it's going to teach them a good thing. Oh, but ain't that America, you and me. So, for enforcing a law intended to control adult-run food establishments, not children's lemonade stands, and being so cavalier about it, you, Midway Georgia Police Chief Kelly Morningstar, are Worldwide Hippies Asshole of the Week. And that's it for this week. As always, visit WorldWideHippies.com for more original articles from our own authors and news from around the world updated every two hours. And consider making a donation or visit our store to help Worldwide Hippies keep up the howl for peace and justice. And we will see you here next Monday.